Before we begin, I want to be honest about this. Dragon Age is not a game that shies away from things like race, uh, class, gender, uh, where men and women belong in society. They they even go as far as you know making sort of a, a big point about a character being known as a man, but presenting as a woman and everyone noticing that that woman is a woman and not a man, even though everyone knows them as a man. So it's not like they're they're going through and like um, uh, making that any type of like joke or anything. The characters are just in astonishment between what they heard and what they see. And of course, they're proven wrong for having that ideology. That's just one example I think it was in one of the northern uh, missions, one of the northern uh, quests that you're on. You interact with some some fella in a long white trench coat, and he's got like a dinosaur head or some kind of spiky head situation going on. And I'm sorry, it's been a long time, and I, I he's he's astonished that you are a uh, female uh, person, <laughs> if you will, a birthing person, a flesh tuber, as we've been been told they are. Um, they, uh, so they, this game is not like out of step with what they do, but it is a step beyond what they do, okay? Just so we understand out of the gate that Dragon Age has never shied away from these leftist ideologies and these, um, uh, extra sexual kind of things, you know, these extra normative sex things. I don't even know what a good term for it is, I guess. I'm not going to say that until this point, right, that they weren't agenda driven. I'm saying that at this point, it is obvious that they are agenda-driven, okay? That's what I'm trying to get across here, is that the agenda's always been there, but now it's suffocating you. It has wrapped its tentacles around your throat, and it's not going to let you get away unless you conform. So here you go. Grums brings this to our attention here this morning, and he has this to say. He says, Dragon Age Veilguard leak. The worst fears confirmed, and it's much worse than we think. He says this is the end of Bioware. Now, this is uh, Nahri, I think is how you pronounce it, Nahri. Uh, we'll look at her YouTube channel in just a minute. Uh, gets the scoop in her interview with a game tester who reveals all that happened. Alleged rumors from the testing in 2023 build highlights, okay? So here's what we have from the interview. It says, the game is super woke. Pronouns are in your face. The Canari uh, companion literally introduces themselves with immersion-breaking modern language. I identify myself as non-binary. And we'll go take a look at that right here. This is the interview with Nahri. We're only going to hear about this part, and we'll go back over to what Grums has to say. But I want to show you, this guy's legit. These people don't speak English as a first language, so just be prepared that they have a slight accent to them, okay? First of all, you need to understand that this is fantasy game. Yes. Our words, our words, it's different than their words. Exactly. For example, she told me that I am a non-binary person. All right. Now, he's talking about one of the com companions. If you weren't looking at the screen, he's talking about one of the companions in this new game, not an old one. This is a tester talking about him, ta his, uh, talking to one of the Canari companions. How the hell that a fantasy game in, oh. like, Thedas... <sighs> have the word oh my god binary in their yeah I, i've seen that a lot they gone off fina like why are you fucking doing why are you talking Seriously? like this oh my god so if, the if, companion if, told you yeah. oh i'm non-binary yeah I, I i she said that uh, i don't like men and i don't like women i identify myself as non-binary just like that and that's just like that not even a new word like they didn't even make up like a new word in lore right and that's what i wanted to drag your attention to that's the whole reason we went through that clip is because that line right there they did not bother to make up any new lore to try and pass it off as an in-world thing they are smashing you in the face that this lady this companion this non-binary person that is introducing themselves as such is such within the world itself so the world itself has Two spirit. It has um, uh, all these other sexualities that I can't think of right now. Uh, asexual. Um, the uh, uh, of course you got your gay, your lesbian, uh, trans. Probably trans. You know, an out and out like outwardly trans. Like hi, I am trans. Yeah, so and so. You know that thing. Like you know, it's one thing to make up a word 
But it's an entirely different thing to just copy and paste from real life and expect people to enjoy that kind of experience, I guess. But uh, so we'll go on here and it says romances were and still may be gender locked unless you choose a pronoun other than he him. You must be uh, pansexual or you uh, were are restricted to two romance options, Neve and Harding, while other choices may romance anyone at all. This might have changed due to BG3, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 success and influence. Solus is uh, sidelined uh, hard, uh, made into minor character uh, with little importance or development until suddenly important at the end of the game. And that ending is baffling and not good in a good way, but no spoilers are revealed. Because again, you know, they have certain restrictions on what they're allowed to say. And so I guess this wasn't like, you can say out loud your experience, but you can't like say out loud what that experience was tied to. So where he got that response out of that character, he can't say that in the middle of a boss battle, we were fighting this three-headed Hydra dragon thing, and all of a sudden the character said that. So that could be what the legal restriction is, is that you're not allowed to speak about the actual event that caused that line of dialogue, but you're allowed to talk about the line of dialogue. So, you know, that makes sense a little bit anyway. But, you know, Sola's being uh, sidelined until the very end. It's one of these classic moves where they feel that they need to have, like, that big anime moment where a character comes out of nowhere and saves the day and suddenly becomes, like, the secondary most powerful character just before the end of the show. Remember that? Yeah. The story is disappointment after disappointment. Well, yeah, what a surprise, modern gaming. Facial animation is Andromeda all over again and plastic, which uh, I assume is a lot of like faces tired quality. Um, again, we see a lot of this with the motion capture stuff is that human beings have like a, a resting facial expression. Uh, you and me, you know, I have resting bitch face. You may have a, a resting bored face. You may have resting super excited, ready to go face. You know, you might have that cat on Adderall look, you know, I don't know. But uh, this, is, this is kind of the problem with doing facial, re facial capture technology, body capture technology, is that the system ends up with, like, strange facial expressions hanging around because in between takes, the actors are just doing their thing. But lines are still being fed, they're making body movements, and maybe the face isn't corresponding. Or perhaps the animators moved in and decided to change that facial expression so it looks more robotic and doesn't correspond with the face. It's a whole problem. Rather than just natively animating it the whole way through, you have the facial expressions while not like compensating for that in the attitude of the character. So that's where this kind of facial breaking thing ends up happening is that there's no a there's no acclimation for why a character would like between takes, you know? You remember that guy in um what was that? LA Noir after he said that he was talking about the death of some character and he goes He's very proud of himself for saying whatever he said. He just, mm-hmm, 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 just silently nodding his head like it's what happened in the, in the voice booth, apparently, while they were recording his face, and that just found its way into the game. He just has this strange expression after he says that. Like, I read it right. There's totally not somebody in my headphones giving me instructions that I'm nodding to after saying those lines. It's, it's annoying. Okay, it's annoying at best. It's because actors themselves are not being told that everything that they do is being fed into the game. For whatever reason, they just keep forgetting to tell these people that when you go into resting bitch face, congratulations, the character's going to do that too. But anyway, we have um, the Inquisitor and, and Inquisition is corrupt and may not be of any help even if you didn't disband it. Choices don't matter. It's Mass Effect 3 all over again. Uh, Rook is sidelined, backstory is wasted, just a guy in a bar, very much diminished. What a surprise. Tester feedback was ignored. The boss said, it's a very, it's very good feedback, but I can't send it to them, the devs. It's very good, but basically you can't talk about how the woke stuff is making the game worse. It's not something that you could talk about, even if it's ruining the game. And, you know, that tracks. Look what happened with Concord. Look what happened with this uh, stuff that's going on with uh, Halo. They got a guy at, working for Halo that's afraid of guns. He's a, he's a creative um, lead. He's the lead designer or something like that over there for them. And he is afraid of guns. Yeah, that's real. That actually happened. 
So it's it, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You know, these people invite this trouble and then they don't want to hear that there's trouble. What a surprise. So the Grey Warden uh, Davrin, a uh, newcomer uh, who never finished his training, gets to influence and make important decisions for the Grey Warden solely because he is a uh, person of color. And I'm not sure if... Well, why not? Might as well be person of color. They got binary in the, in the game, so uh, non-binary, rather. So uh, they get to decide everything. The segment of the game in the Fade is boring, walk a, a walking simulator just to fetch some, just to do some fetch quests, apparently. Completely wasted opportunity. Other major characters like Varek turned into mere advisors and pushed to the back of the story. Uh, it's so far removed from Origins that it's crazy that it's in the same universe, says the tester. And so... This is the end of Bioware, uh, the interview concludes. The final nail in the coffin of a once great studio and franchise. And so, yes, as Grums recommends here, feel free to check out uh, uh, Nohari's uh, uh, channel here. As you can see, you can check her out right, right there. I'll put her channel link in the description below if you want to go see. I'll put the video link to this one right here below. If you want to go watch the whole video and subscribe while you're there, we sure would appreciate it. But uh, we need to go back over and remind you that uh, Dragon Age franchise creator David Gator dismisses critics who fear the veil that Dragon Age Veilguard will be woke as effing tourists saying they wander around looking to fixate on problems that don't exist. It sounds like they exist a lot. Based on what we heard, it sounds like they exist a lot. And so you've got Dragon Age the Veilguard creative director reveals that all of the game's companions are canonically pansexual. You, the player, get to choose if you're not you get to be the outsider how do you like that huh they flip that around on you you like that isn't that interesting how do people come to be born in this world do they just i don't know i don't remember the whole like everybody hatches from eggs part of the lore and dragon age i'm sure that there's races that do that but i don't remember everybody hatches from eggs that fall from the sky that nobody lays because well everybody's you know busy doing other things and then again, Bioware and Electronic Arts reveal disastrous first look at Dragon Age of Veilguard official upload debut teaser currently at 192,000 dislikes and counting. That was all the way back in June. That's gotten so much worse since then. I don't have the extension on my, uh, my browser to look at the uh, thumbs downs on videos because it just doesn't... I know when something's bad. I don't need a big number to tell me. So I'll just take, you know, this is already at 200,000 dislikes back in June. You can imagine how bad it is now. And so here we go. It's even worse, right? Roll this back to before that even came out, before that trailer even came out. Way back over a year ago now, after numerous high-level departures, Dragon Age Dreadwolf developer Bioware announces they are eliminating 50 roles. This is way back in August of 2023, just a little over a year ago. And so that's where we're at right now, is that they fired a bunch of people who were most likely overlapping with this project as well. And you can bet that they, uh, this was in 2023, by the way. This was not before the pandemic. This was not as a result of pandemic bloat. Take a look at that game. That's not the, the Dragon Age Veilguard situation here. That has absolutely nothing to do with cutting people out of the, of the process here. That has everything to do with telling people in the process what to do and not letting them do anything else. And it's, uh, you know, this is all, this is just an example of what's possible with the character creator. Now, of course, everybody likes to make these colorful characters that have all sorts of weird uh, anatomy um, choices, I guess. But they made sure that you couldn't have uh, Gazunga Glugs in this one, if you know what I mean. And they made sure that you weren't allowed to have a Dumpy either. Like, your maximum dumpy is, like, smaller than Brie Larson's dumpy, if you know what I mean, right? So that's, I don't know. I don't know, man. You, uh, I don't know if you want this thing on your machine. I really don't know if you want this thing on your machine. You're better off sticking with a previous venture because, guess what? It feels like this one, it definitely looks like this one, is going to be the most propaganda-ridden Dragon's Age, Dragon Age ever, by the way, okay? Now, see, I like the soundtrack of this, of this story. I, I really like the operatic one uh, that showed up during the wars, and I just, uh, the, the, where they're thinking about being the new god and stuff like that, and I just, man, it just lights your heart on fire when you hear some of that music, and uh, it's a real, it really drags me down 
when I hear about the story that these games were building to, that all that music was based on, leads to this. Now, I get this is a custom character that somebody made, but just the absurdity of where we're at right now, where you've got characters in a fantasy game talking about non-binary sexualities, and just, like, it, there's dragons! There's magic! There's wizards! There's swords and sorcery! And, the, nope, the, the, the butt sex is what we've got to talk about. That's what we've got to talk about in this game. With all these other things to do, we need to make it clear everybody's stances on butt sex. I don't know. You'll have to let me know what you think down below. And as always, guys, good luck out there.